It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maite. Five children are killed or injured in Yemen every single day. That's the new number from UNICEF on the toll from how the Saudi-led war is impacting the Middle East's poorest country. Three million children have been born into the world's worst humanitarian crisis since the Saudi-led coalition began bombing Yemen in March 2015. This week, the World Food Program issued yet another dire warning. It's obviously clear that uh, Yemen is in the grips of the world's biggest hunger crisis. It is really the biggest crisis that we have in the moment anywhere in the world. So hard um, to deal with this. People who are severely food insecure, approximately 8.4 million. Acutely malnourished children, six months to five years, around 1.8 million and acutely malnourished pregnant or nursing women, around 1.1 million. So you see just the statistics speak for themselves. This is a nightmare that is happening right now. Joining me is Shireen Aladimi, a Harvard Graduate School student originally from Yemen. So Shireen, uh, these are figures that will shock many people. Uh, five children killed or wounded uh, per day, uh, at least 400,000 children severely malnourished. As somebody from Yemen with friends and family there, I'm sure they're of no surprise to you. But my question for you is, are they actually an understatement? They are in fact an understatement. Uh, these figures are reporting the number of children who are directly injured or killed because of violence. And they're not reporting, of course, the children who are dying every single day because of malnutrition, because of diseases like cholera and now diphtheria. And, um, you know, largely due to the blockade that the Saudis were imposing or still imposing on Yemen. And so those figures are much worse, unfortunately. In November, Save the Children reported that 130 children are dying each and every single day because of these other causes that are not just um, because of the violence that is uh, perpetrated by Saudi Arabia. For people who aren't familiar with it, can you explain um, how this blockade works? Uh, Yemen was already before the war, uh, the poorest country in the Middle East, and access to it is very limited by just a small number of ports, which Saudi Arabia has effectively cut off. Yes, so the port of Hadeda on, on the, um, Ara on the um, Red Sea is um, the most important port um, for Yemenis, and this is where we used to import most of our food and also you know it's not just because we don't need it just because just for aid we also need it for trade which is completely halted at the moment because of the war um so they've blockaded land sea and air they've been imposing this blockade for about three years now they've intensified the blockade over the last couple of months which is why it was getting media attention um and um they've currently lifted it temporarily they're saying for 30 days they've allowed some food to come in through the port of Pareda, but it's all in their hands still. They're acting, um, you know, they're holding people hostage. They're holding the, the destiny of millions of Yemenis in their hands, uh, and they're choosing when to allow food and medicine and, you know, aid in and when to refuse it. So people are still dying. And what do you think their strategy is? Uh, I mean, is there a reasoning in their thinking behind uh, holding people hostage, as they say? Do they think that that's going to create uh, leverage for them to impose the political settlement that they want, which is basically uh, getting rid of the Houthis as a political force? Essentially, the Saudis want to take over. They want to install their own puppet government in Yemen. And they're trying everything at their disposal, including using hunger as a, as a uh, weapon of war, which of course we know is illegal, but they keep getting away with it. Um, they are hoping that Yemenis will just surrender and allow them to control Yemen as, as they see Bit. But of course, that's not that strategy has not panned out for them. Um, I've read reports where the Saudis thought that they could start this war in Yemen, maybe be finished with it within six weeks. Of course, we're now in our third year, and uh, they're still bombing. They're still, you know, desperately trying to maintain some kind of control over this country, but they're failing miserably. Uh, people don't want to have the Saudis as their overlords. We've seen what happened in southern Yemen, where I'm from and the Emiratis took over and uh, you have groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS and all sorts of extremist groups plus the mercenaries that the Saudis have hired uh, and they're all you know vying for power and people still don't see this liberation that they've expected from the Saudis so um, 
it's it's a failed strategy. You know, speaking of failed strategy, uh, you mentioned Al Qaeda. Can you talk about how uh, the U.S. backed bombing has, in fact, empowered Al Qaeda and ISIS inside of Yemen? Right. So the Saudis have no problem working with any groups, and um, that includes Al Qaeda, of course. So in 2016, there were reports, there were there's video evidence of the Saudi troops uh, working, or you know, troops that are paid by the Saudis um, working alongside Al Qaeda. And at the time, they were trying to drive away the Houthis from certain parts of Tez. And so um, you have groups like that who are empowered. Uh, other groups who have taken um, you know, gained more control because of the power vacuumed, uh, power vacuum that the Saudis have created in the South. And so um, it's counterintuitive to be working with the Saudis, given that they are so readily willing to work with groups that are openly, you know, Al-Qaeda or have uh, ties to Al-Qaeda. What do you make right now of the efforts underway in Washington? Uh, there have been a growing number of lawmakers who have uh, called for cutting off uh, U.S. military support for the Saudi coalition. And recently you've had uh, Obama administration officials uh, expressing some regret for what they helped start back in March 2015. Samantha Power, uh, the former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., is among those to come out and say, we made a mistake in supporting the Saudi-led war. You know, it's a very hypocritical stance to take because these numbers were just as dire when Obama was under control. Um, you know, maybe we didn't hear about them as much, but people were dying. People were dying of cholera, of uh, violence, and the Saudis were committing, you know, airstrike after airstrike after airstrike. Um, and human rights uh, organizations were calling, you know, for a halt to U.S. support right from the beginning. So it's a bit hypocritical for Obama um, administrators to now finally say, oh, okay, now that it's, this is a Trump uh, war on Yemen, now we're against it. But nonetheless, we need lawmakers in the Senate and in uh, the House, lawmakers such as um, Chris, uh, Chris Murphy, who have been calling adamantly for U.S. to stop its support of um, Saudi Arabia military. Now, of course, that's the best hope that we as Yemenis have. And um, the U.S. Army recently just posted on their Twitter page the extent of their support to the Saudi military. And it's really astonishing. This includes training, um, um, not only refueling uh, airplanes midair, but also repairing those uh, aircraft and vehicles when they've been damaged in the war, uh, updating them, uh, providing the soldiers with um, basic training all the way to very sophisticated training. And so the U.S. is very heavily involved in the war on Yemen um, by helping the Saudis. And without them, the Saudis aren't, aren't going to be able to um, continue this to wage this war, this war much longer. Uh, of course, we know then there are also weapon shipments that are ongoing and um, have increased under Trump's administration. Uh, so the Saudis are very much reliant on U.S. support. And that's what needs to stop if we want to see the, an end to this war. Shireen, let me read that tweet that you mentioned uh, from the U.S. Army. The Saudi Arabian National Guard has enormous capacity, and the hashtag U.S. Army helps them develop that into powerful capability. As a Yemeni, what was your reaction when you saw that? I mean, it wasn't a secret. Uh, we all know the, that the U.S. Army is helping the Saudis. But just if you click on that link and you go to that article, the extent of that alliance is outlined, uh, you know, in each paragraph, basically they're saying that the Saudis are incompetent and we're helping them become more competent. Uh, and they're acknowledging that there are Saudi casualties at the Yemen border. And they said that, you know, the number of ca casualties is classified, but it's high. And so they're training them on how to save um, Saudi soldier lives. Uh, they are helping them with maintaining aircraft, you know, vehicles and updating them and whatnot. And it's just, you know, Trump can say, oh, lift the blockade, or Obama administration can say, well, we don't like this anymore. But just the extent of support has been going on for so long, and it hasn't waned, despite the huge humanitarian crisis that we know is caused by this war, um, despite the staggering number of lives that have been lost. And, uh, you know, the U.S. still proudly supports Saudi Arabia in that endeavor. So that is unfortunate. Shireen, finally, when you speak to people uh, back in Yemen, your family and friends, what do you hear from them? There's hope, but also a lot of desperation. People are worried. Um, life goes on, of course. They're trying to make the best of a worse situation. 
but uh, and they're trying to help each other out. Uh, we often many Yemenis living in North America are sending cash to our to our families, not only for them, but also for them to help their poor neighbors and the people that they see on the streets. And so they they know it's a desperate situation. Um, they know that if this blockade continues and if the uh, currency keeps crashing the way it has been, then there's no hope for even them to stay, you know, alive. And um, you know, they're grateful for people in America who are who are speaking out against their governments. Uh, but there's just a, a bleak future ahead of them. And um, for many people, they they don't even have the luxury of worrying about a future. It's the, their presence is already bleak. People are dying every single day because of uh, very preventable diseases and uh, malnutrition and whatnot. So it's it's really heartbreaking. It's uh, unfortunately still a conflict that doesn't receive much attention. So uh, I'm grateful for for you to to continue to shed light on this uh, on this issue. And of course, we'll continue to do so. Shireen Aladimi, Harvard Graduate School student, originally from Yemen. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.